Well, A said to B, she had said something that was not uh, NBC, non-violent communication. But of course he forgot that this is a judgment. Now it's a criticism in this context because NBC is considered to be the right thing to be. And of course, um, she considered what he was judging, what he was thinking. Whereas uh, all we should hear is what is the need that um, that he is struggling with. And uh, to respond then, um, one has to say, well, how is he feeling at the minute? What is he feeling? So each was being non NBC in that they were judging and reacting to each other's judgments. And they were doing this because they were listening to what the other was thinking from what they said instead of listening for and feelings and needs that are crying out in the other person. And so, for instance, one could have asked him, are you feeling unappreciated, love? And equally, of course, uh, she, could, she could have been asked, Similarly, or are you feeling unloved? So in both cases, um, the inquiry would have been about what the other is feeling. It would have been an empathetic inquiry. Not, of course, a statement of some own self-guilt, or judgment as to whether um, such feelings were valid or, or anything like that. And from each showing empathy to the other, neither would then have felt vulnerable and been busy putting up a defence, and both alive to the needs of the other person. In other words, their poor expression of their needs came out as a judgment and a condemnation of the other and left them both at war. So we refuse to listen to judgments. We refuse to listen to what the other person's thinking. We're concerned with the other person's heart condition, if you like, their feelings and their needs, quite independent of what interpretation of what is or might be going on around them. We refuse to hear their judgment and their criticism take it as just an extremely unfortunate way of trying to communicate what their feelings and needs are, an extremely unfortunate way of crying out for help, a way that, a wrong, a way that actually causes havoc and um, has them totally misunderstood and um, without sympathy, without empathy, 
stripped of the possibility of having your help. And our solution is therefore to listen carefully to anything they say and encourage them to say that which is really occupying them, which is what they feel, what's alive in them at the minute, what their problem is that they're struggling with. It might be they're feeling lonely, or they feel vulnerable, or, um, you know, they're, um, they're angry. Not that I have made them angry. I'm not, I'm not preoccupied or focused on anything like that, you see. I'm not interested in the explanation. I'm interested in understanding how they're feeling and to let them know I understand their need, how they're feeling. Not that I'm preoccupied with their explanation. You know, that they are taking some impression of me that is the cause of their problem. I'm only the cause of their problem if they take my behaviours as they see it, to be the cause, if that's their understanding. So we're not here to either condemn them or to condemn ourselves. We're here to truly hear the other's needs and their wants. And because those needs and wants are the same for all life, you know, we all want shelter and security and um, food and uh, um, love and appreciation and so on and so forth. We all have the same needs. And when you realize this need is being felt to be not, ne not met by the other person, then of course... Uh, um, one's heart starts to go out to them and you're ready to hear what their needs are and their needs become your needs because you know you have an empathy with such needs you have the same needs yourself and you can now understand the other person. You see, you're not hearing their explanation that you're the cause of how they're feeling. You're not here to judge yourself or them. You're here to simply appreciate what need in them is crying out. Now you may or may not be able to meet that need and um, you yourself may have certain needs that's preventing you um, from meeting their needs. But you're now in a position of loving and understanding the other person wanting to meet their need, not just your own. Neither they nor you are now alone. Neither they nor you are cut off by some judgment. You know their need, whereas you might not have done before they blurted out whatever criticism or attack they may have made. 
And they are beginning to get the message that you are concerned for their need. You're focused on trying to understand them. In fact, trying to see if there's some way you can reasonably rescue them. You're actually busy in creating desire in yourself to meet their need and to be a blessing. And of course, once they start to feel this, well, we're all much better when we're loved in this way, aren't we? Suddenly the world becomes less dangerous, less hostile, as we see it. So it's how we interpret the data that comes in. We don't listen to what their accusations and judgments are, their criticisms. We're not interested in what they're thinking. We're interested in the need and the feelings that are really at heart steering the other person. Of course, they're reacting to these um, feelings and needs that are not being met in a way that's making life more and more difficult, isolated, hostile, dangerous. We will have none of that. We're interested in what their feelings and needs are. And that concern, that empathy, that true love overcomes the darkness, overcomes the criticism, overcomes the judgment, overcomes the desire to hit back. Because there's no need to. The other person finds they're not in a hostile environment. There's no need to keep fighting you off, as they see it. And they too find a desire to, well, they find they're in a place where they feel they are safe. They feel in community. They feel support. They're being understood for what their true feelings and needs are and appreciated for such. And accepted. They're feeling an acceptance, a warmth, kindness. So that's the NBC approach. It's quite hard to pull off because we're in the habit of classifying everything as right and wrong, proclaiming our judgment accordingly, and in vain hoping that this will have some miraculous effect on the other person who will repent and say sorry and um, do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. You see, we're full of that. Our language and our, our way of handling our social environment is violent. Well, that's a judgment, isn't it? And there's certainly no point in declaring such judgment to the person who is um, overcome by such cultural inclination. We bring a different culture. I think it's a godly, a heavenly culture. 
culture you might expect from living in God's family, the host of heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So the process of nonviolent communication is um, a continual um, action to not make judgments, not hear judgments, not attend to what the other person is thinking but what the other person is feeling. So you inquire and you don't get it right but you start to communicate that you are concerned with their feelings and their needs and you're trying to understand such. In other words, you have a loving approach and um, they're not used to this so they misunderstand the purpose of your inquiry. They might feel it's manipulation or another form of attack, you know. Um, it, it's not a necessarily an instant um, formula, you might um, be inquiring for some time before you get it right as to what their feelings are, what needs they are expressing concerning how their feelings are not being um, met. Um, in the way that they would like. And uh, this is done by when they do express not judgments or criticism, but they actually come up with um, what their feeling is more accurately than you are asking. You express it back to them. You know, in the form of, uh, ah, you're feeling so and so then. Until you get to the point where they say, yes, that's right, that is what I'm feeling. You know, something like that, a good response in that way. And um, they're now beginning to feel assured that you are um, understanding what their needs are and their feelings, which is different to you being hostile as they see it, critical, judging. And then when you've made this empathetic uh, connection, they too become willing to hear what your feelings are and your needs are. Um, now that might simply be because you hadn't realized what was going on, that you, that you understand their view, their feelings. And that you've now, you feel much happier because you do. And or it may also be um, that um, you want to express certain feelings that are, are troubling you and what your needs are. And of course they're able to hear now because they know you're not hostile. You have the same needs as they have. And uh, for some reason your needs are not going to be being met at the minute. Your feelings are upset in a way that they can identify with. They know how you feel because we all, all life, have the same feelings and basic needs. So that's what we're at. And, uh, well, it's 
a way of peace, not a way of strife and war. And you will find it's a way of peace that overcomes strife and war. The violent approach starts to evaporate. quite miraculous and very lovely and moves towards true fellowship, true love and kindness, the sort of heaven you want to live in. Thank you Heavenly Father.